when I see patients in clinic, one of the most common questions I get is, why me? Why did I get it? Are there any risk factors that are associated with developing CLL? Yeah, I get that question too. Is it, you know, why did I get it? Why, why didn't my neighbor get it? Um, it's amazing how little we know about this. We do know that CLL is much more prevalent in Western countries than it is in, say, Asian countries. It's a very rare um, disorder in, um, in Japan. Um, there are, uh, there are, lymphomas in general tend to occur in, there's a belt in the United States that where they're more common. Um, for instance, in, they tend to be around more agricultural areas that this is more uh, common. It's more common in white males than it is in um, other, um, other groups. But exactly why that occurs, we don't know. Um, it does look like that people who emigrate to this country um, ultimately um, their, their risk, their low risk, if they're from Asia and they emigrate to the United States, within a couple, few generations becomes very similar to the rest of the population. So that lends people to think that there has to be some um, environmental exposure. And finally, there is a, a rare form of CLL um, that is a familial form. And so we know that um, family members of patients with CLL are at increased risk of getting, um, of getting CLL. That said, you still, you know, you can still take comfort in that the absolute risk of family members getting CLL is small compared to all the other, unfortunately, all the other things that we face. That's a really important point. Uh, often we talk to our patients about some of the genetic changes that we can now identify in the leukemia cells that help with risk stratification. And the first question I get is, well, are those genetic changes things I could pass on? And it's really important to explain that, no, those genetic changes are in the cancer itself. Yeah, exactly. It's not what we call a germline mutation. It's yeah. not an inherited, you know, the, for instance, you often hear about um, in breast cancer, there being these genes that are, can be passed on to, um, to family members. That's not what we're seeing here. And we can't identify um, the, the, the gene that's causing, uh, causing CLL. And it looks like it's, there's not one. When we look, when we do molecular profiling of CLL cells, there's many, many different um, changes that, that occur. It's not just one problem. In lymphomas, there's often these genetic changes that occur where two chromosomes within the lymphoma cells, again, not within the rest of the patient, break off and change partners and drive it. We just don't have that in, in CLL. So these cells accumulate. What are the complications that arise from that for our patients? Well, I mean, I think you can think of uh, sort of a different groups of, of issues that can occur. So I think one of the issues is that, um, is that as the cells proliferate and grow, um, you can have problems that they crowd out and cause marrow dysfunction, meaning they don't allow um, normal cells, red cells, platelets, other white blood cells to grow in the, in the bone marrow. And that means someone can become anemic. Right, their hemoglobin drops, their, their energy is gonna go down, they're, they're gonna be tired, their ability to exercise will, will go down. Um, they can have problems with platelets. So platelets are the cells in our blood that help us clot blood, and so there can be a bleeding risk if the, those drop down. Um, I think but one of the harder to quantify but, but real issues is, is uh, problems with our immune system. Um, we, we often talk about you know, what are the good white blood cells, the neutrophils that help us fight off bacterial infections. But even when patients have normal neutrophil functions, because they have neutrophil numbers, because of these interactions between the different parts of our immune system, it doesn't really, even in, even in patients that aren't um, actively being treated, there are some defects in the, in the immune system that occur. And unfortunately, this tends to accumulate over time, right? So patients who are early on in the course of disease, they may have pretty close to a normal um, immune system. But as time goes on, whether it's with or without therapy, there can be um, other defects that occur and make people more susceptible to infection. And, and infection is one of the, the biggest issues that patients with CLL face. And this defect in the immune system not only may lead to infection, but some have hypothesized that this might be why CLL patients may have a higher risk of other cancers too. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great point too. So there does seem to be um, a, a family of things, most commonly skin cancers, honestly, but there are others, malignancies that occur as well, that this defect in the immune system may allow other malignancies to, to grow. You know, we know that none, no cancer should exist in our body. Our immune system should be able to surveil and take care of that and get rid of and, and eliminate other cancers. But when your immune system doesn't work correctly, then it's an opportunity for, for cancers to, to grow. And there, are, um, and there are an increased incidence of second malignancies in patients who have CLL. 